It seems impossible not to compare Detroit Become Human to Quantic Dream's previous works. For the longest, the studio has been making games aiming to achieve one thing, creating the ultimate interactive experience. Yes, that means the gameplay is still as shallow as ever, but that's something you'll simply have to accept. At the end of the day, it's the unique execution of its setting, the way it tells its story, that makes this game stand out. Detroit takes you on an adventure in the hope that you'll find the answer to one of today's most relevant questions. Our world is rapidly evolving in technology, but at what point do we set a limit? It's 2038. Android technology has become mainstream and the city of Detroit is filled with human-like robots helping people in all kinds of ways with their daily lives. While this may seem like a positive development, it didn't come without its negative effects too. First of all, unemployment rates are higher than ever, causing for large groups of people unhappy with their presence often marching the streets to protest. To make matters even worse, more and more androids are showing signs of deviancy, not following orders anymore, but choosing to lead their own lives. At the center of the game are three android protagonists, whose story you get to decide. Kara serves as a housekeeper. She lives together with a recently divorced guy and his daughter Alice. After witnessing the abusive behavior of her owner, she takes the child and the two flee the house. On their escape, they'll face many obstacles with the goal to find a better place. Connor is part of the police force. He's programmed to be cold-blooded and doesn't shy away from using whichever measures necessary to achieve his goal. Things get complicated, however, when he gets partnered up with Hank Anderson, a troubled character with personal issues. The last thing Hank needs right now is an android constantly breathing down his neck, well, figuratively. Last of all, there's Marcus. His situation is fairly problem-free, but that changes after unforeseen circumstances. He's forced to abandon his old residence and gets in touch with a rebel android group ready to take over the city and leave a message to the world. I was initially somewhat worried whether I would care as much for each character's individual story, with especially Marcus looking somewhat bland from the outside. Fortunately, these worries were quickly taken away. All three of these characters are great, and it's easy to put yourself in their shoes, mostly thanks to a huge step forward in acting compared to a game like Heavy Rain. You lied to me, Connor. You lied to me. Obviously, a setting like this creates many opportunities to show the potential of what the world could look like in 20 years. It does that in certain unique ways. Books have basically turned into large tablets, androids can make transactions with the blink of an eye, and they have their own spots to stand in public transport. The main menu itself, without giving anything away, is smartly made part of the experience, and that was cool to see. Generally though, I felt the developer played it relatively safe, and could have come up with a few more ways to make me more curious about what would truly be different in 20 years from now. Graphically, Detroit is the type of game that will often drop your jaw. Everything from environmental details to character models and voice acting is at a level unseen in most other games. Sure, I sometimes felt like certain tricks were applied, for example, objects in the distance are often blurred out to hide lower quality textures, but that barely takes away from the overall look and feel. It's another game that can be added to the long list of beautiful PS4 exclusives, and Quantic Dream has once again proven to possess top-of-the-line technology. But that's when we get to the gameplay, which has always been somewhat controversial in Quantic Dream's titles. I mentioned it briefly in the intro, Detroit is not a game in the true sense of the word. I look at it more as an experience. It's a story where you get to decide how it plays out, and because its narrative is so serious and realistic, I understand that it's hard to come up with substantial gameplay mechanics. If you thought Heavy Rain opened slow, Detroit will give that a whole new dimension. The game picks up in the later half, but the first hours will feel particularly slow. Yes, you'll still be doing those same typical chores that you're used to. 
In Kara's very first mission, for example, she is tasked with cleaning the entire house. From taking out the trash, serving dinner to the family, and hanging everyone's clothes, these slow moments play a bigger part than ever. Marcus' activities aren't much different. Whether it is to pick something up at a store, or to get his owner out of bed and bring him his breakfast. It's a way to make you care about these characters, though at the same time you can imagine it feeling quite mundane. Fortunately, a lot of that stuff is now made optional, and only one objective is truly required to proceed with the story if you wish. Now, me, I found it hard not to do absolutely everything, seeing as I didn't want to miss out on additional information. That info is often needed to get the best possible outcome that you'd want in all situations, but the consequence was that it didn't exactly help my enjoyment of it all. I had a similar experience with Connor's missions. As part of the police, most of his time is spent solving crimes, which means you're constantly scanning environments and finding many clues. Again, I have to make comparisons here, because if you've played Heavy Rain, you'll probably recognize a lot of this. Analyzing crime scenes is something you'd already do as Norman Jaden, the only difference being there's a lot more of it now. If you aren't doing any of this, you'll usually be talking to people and making many choices. You still have those intense chase and combat sequences, which when they happen are spectacular, but sadly they're few and far between. It was what had me most surprised. While I went into Detroit knowing what to expect, I still found myself often annoyed simply by the stale and simple formula of the gameplay. It's the first time that happened to me playing a game from Quantic Dream, and I can't quite explain why. Part of that may have been the story, which didn't have me on the edge of my seat at every moment. Either way, I'd recommend you take your time. Play this game at your own pace, and allow yourself to take breaks. One of the key selling points of Detroit is its storytelling branches, the many choices it allows you to make that decide how the rest plays out. In this area, it's easily the most impressive game I've played yet. Now you can tell the developer is very proud of this element, and deservingly so. Upon completing any mission, the game will show every choice you've made, as well as the directions it could have gone into. Some of the missions will show a fairly linear structure, but others have an absolutely insane amount of possibilities. At first glance, it's hard to grasp what you missed out on, as those events are shown, but will still be locked. Once you start a second playthrough though, that's when you'll quickly realize what could have gone differently. Entire scenes with their own characters can be missed, the death of companions could have been prevented to still have them with you in later levels. Even small choices have some impact on the story. For example, as Marcus, I noticed an anti-android protest and got beaten up as I walked past. In the next mission, during a conversation with his owner, he randomly brought up that he noticed the shredded clothing, asking what happened. I wasn't even aware that this was something optional, but in my next playthrough I avoided the group and no word was ever spoken about it. It's a very impressive feature, and I don't even want to imagine the effort that went into it. The story mode itself took me around 10 hours to beat, which seemed like a fine length to me, but these choices add a great level of replayability that will totally make you want to find out what else you could have seen. There is just one problem. Having so many outcomes is great, but do they all make sense with the story and feel justified? That's what I would argue. While watching the credits roll, I was honestly left unsatisfied, with an ending that felt a bit too abrupt. One of my androids reached its goal, but I didn't get to see what happened after, and that's exactly what I wanted to know. Another character's ending disappointed me, with a final conversation that felt way too short and simple for a story that was supposed to be so large. Detroit Become Human left me conflicted. It's a great experience and I enjoyed it, there's absolutely no doubt. The game is incredibly well made, with a level of polish and investment in personalizing that journey for you that you simply won't find in many other places. 
But at the same time, there is no huge revelation, nothing that will turn the story on its head and feel justified like the origami killer once did for me. It's fairly predictable, no matter what happens, and it sure doesn't help that there is no solid gameplay to rely on when the engaging story isn't always there. If you liked Quantic Dream's previous work, you'll have a great time with Detroit. If you're a newcomer, you'll be impressed with the many possibilities. But if you've already been on the fence, feeling it was time for the studio to use its great skills not only for three quarters of what makes a game great, but the full picture, this is not the game that will do that just yet. I didn't think the moment would come, but maybe I am slowly starting to get there too. So those were my honest thoughts on Detroit Become Human. I really hope you enjoyed the video and that it hopefully also helped you make a decision on whether to buy the game or not. I wanted to really quickly thank Sony for providing me with a review copy, as well as my patron supporters, who you'll see in the credits right next to me in the video, uh, who make it possible for me to put all this time into making these videos for you all. If you want to help support me, then please leave a very uh, quick like on the video, as well as sharing it online or with your friends to help my channel get more noticed. But most importantly, Important of all, please support me with just a dollar per month or more if you can miss it at patreon.com slash robingaming. You get a bunch of awesome rewards in return, like early access to in-depth videos, uh, my Q&A series each month, and a lot more awesome stuff there, so go and check it out. But for now, like I said, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video, and I hope to see you again next time.